Okay, so it's 1940s Britain, we're in World War II, and in terms of the food supply, a lot of the ways that the country usually has gotten their food has been disrupted. So you have the German U-boats that are monitoring the British ports and really severely limiting any shipment from coming in. And of course you also have Western Europe where Britain usually gets a lot of their fresh foods and that has been occupied so you can't really get uh, it there. Britain on its home front is telling people to grow more food on their own. They're managing factories, they're managing supplies. And one of the ways that the government has managed food supply is through the system of rationing. So things like meats, butter, sugar have all been rationed. Fruits, vegetables, potatoes, and even bread were not rationed, but they were severely limited. Now, it's important to note that during this time, people didn't go hungry. Like, there was food, and in fact, uh, the nutrition for a lot of people actually went up, not just because less meat was eaten and more vegetables were pushed towards people, but due to the system of rationing, it meant that everybody had food, including the poor. And so people's you know, general nutrition actually went up. And I just wanted to point a quote from a woman uh, in that time. I spent an hour making butter from our skim of cream. A week's taking provides about a half a pound. These are inconveniences rather than hardships. We don't go hungry or cold, but luxury is nipped off. So I think it's good to keep that in mind as we go through our Christmas wartime recipes for today. And the recipes that I'm getting this from is actually from recipe books written by the Ministry of Food during that time. So today I'm gonna do three Christmas wartime recipes uh, with you all. And actually a lot of these wartime recipes happen to be sweets. I think it's because it's around Christmas time. They want it to be a little bit more indulgent. The first one is a mock whipped cream. So that should be quite interesting a mock marzipan, which um, you can think of essentially as like a very almondy flavored fondant that you can put, you know, you can roll out, put over cakes, put over cookies. Uh, and then the third one is going to be a decadent Christmas cake that is filled with different kinds of fruit. Okay, so let's talk about the first recipe first. It's a mock whipped cream uh, that is essentially made with either custard powder or cornstarch, some margarine, uh, a little bit of milk and then a little bit of sugar. Dairy was really hard to come by and the UK during that time uh, actually brought in most of their dairy from either New Zealand or Australia. And of course on the home front, um, farmers were actually incentivized by the government saying, try to produce as much dairy as possible, but you yourself uh, can take as much dairy or as much cheese or as much milk as you want. Uh, and there are going to be no rations for for dairy farmers. So um, on that end, it was like that. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to seeing how this recipe is because I'm just thinking like butter and custard and, and I don't know, milk. So uh, yeah, let's, let's go and check this one out. While the custard cools, the cream, the margarine, and some sugar. It also said to add some flavoring essence if you wanted to, so putting a little bit of vanilla. Okay, so it's more or less set. It doesn't 
doesn't look half bad, but I think that the fat from the vegan butter from the margarine and the custard, it's curdled, but it just doesn't mix together uh, that, that well. But I think it's fine for just topping over cake or... So yeah, I actually have the mock cream right here. Um, when we first finished making it, I mean, now still, you can see bits and pieces of the of the vegan butter, of the margarine kind of uh, separated throughout. It didn't break or it didn't curdle, it simply just didn't really uh, blend in with the custard. But if you close your eyes and when I tried this, I was like, oh my gosh, it tastes so much like whipped cream. Like you could definitely top off a cake with it. It would be absolutely delicious if you, you know, if you had ice cream, um, you could top it off with that. Um, I was initially thinking about using it for um, like hot chocolate, but I, I actually think like the color and, and the consistency is a little bit weird, but actually like when you taste it, it tastes very much like whipped cream because it's just lightly sweetened. Um, it's actually really, really good besides looking like it, it might not be so good. So I'm actually really uh, quite, quite impressed, uh, quite impressed with this one. Okay, so the second recipe is mock marzipan. I don't know if it's as popular in the US, but definitely in the UK, Christmas is a very cherished holiday um, in that people really go out and make things really special and unique. So this mock marzipan uses um, sugar or syrup and then soy flour uh, along with some almond essence to make um, to make essentially this fondant. And so instead of sugar, I think I'm going to go with a Lyle's syrup. I think the syrup will actually help with the, the feeling of the fondant a little bit better, but also um, with the Lyle's syrup that I'm using today, traditionally it was actually made from byproduct of sugar refinery. So I think that that makes a little bit more sense to me, especially because sugar was rationed. It was very uh, hard to attain. Um, and it's very interesting that they use soya flour because obviously soy flour is used in a lot of vegan recipes, but I don't see that around at all other than for, you know, health food shops. So I find it really interesting that they have chosen to, to use that uh, for their mock marzipan. So let's, uh, yeah, let's give this one a try. is melt the butter with a tablespoon of water so so then I'm gonna add the syrup and this is Lyle's syrup Finally, the soy flour. actually quite nice. So I was actually quite impressed with the mock marzipan because I'm a big fan of almond extract. So if you stick that in anything, I will, I will eat it. But with the soy flour, um, the soy flour actually made it grainy, which actually reminded me of marzipan because it is made from ground almonds. So that actually wasn't too different at all. Um, it's, it's soft enough to kind of roll out. And what I ended up doing was I'm, well, I'm gonna bake more, but I have some of these um, gingerbread cookies that I've just cut out. And what I'll do is I'll just probably roll this out and then uh, decorate decorate the cookies with them. Cause I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. I, I like this a lot as well. <laughs> okay, so the third recipe that we're going to make is uh, 
I think pretty decadent for wartime and it is this Christmas cake that is filled with various different kinds of fruit and I think what I had read was that during Christmas time um, the government would switch around which types of foods or how much uh, a particular food was rationed so maybe there would be more kind of like goodies like sugar a little bit more butter during uh, the Christmas time I see the use of sugar of margarine of mixed spices fresh or dried eggs along with mixed fruit but even fruits and produce grown within the UK you have to think okay during a war obviously distribution is going to be very difficult you know like cars moving or like shipments coming in and out I also see here two to four eggs fresh or dried. The UK uh, imported a lot of their kind of high calorie, high protein uh, foods from abroad and for eggs specifically it was from the US. 80,000 tons was it? In order to save room, in order to have the eggs you know not spoil or not break, um, the US actually uh, sent the UK dried eggs. So everything needed to be dehydrated um, and on um, all of the liquid removed. And it was interesting because this is kind of one of the one of the things that people had said about um, dried eggs. <laughs> the two words which still make my blood run cold are, dried egg. The very worst breakfast was a two inch block of hard scrambled egg oozing with water and the taste. Ugh. <laughs> so I've never tried powdered egg before. I was never really a big egg fan even, you know, when I when I did eat eggs, but I, I understand how the separation issue could work if you, I guess, dried up egg. Probably going to just use uh, flax seeds for the eggs instead because there's so much baking powder um, and yeah everything actually it seems very vegan friendly this uh, Christmas cake recipe so uh, yeah so let's let's go ahead and try that one <laughs> flax eggs as opposed to normal eggs so that's how flax eggs are a bit runny so but it does glue everything together eight ounces of flour so you can add a little bit more to make up for the flax egg but I think this should be good. Maybe we'll do another half. Salt. And a level teaspoon of mixed spices. A teaspoon of cinnamon. It's very spiced. <laughs> seems pretty good. I think we added maybe a quarter cup of milk, so not too much. Okay. My pan.
Okay, so with the Christmas cake, I mean, even with it coming out of the oven, it was super fragrant because we put all of those like holiday spices in there. Um, I am actually going to be serving that one uh, for dinner today, but like I had told you, I had a little extra batter because my pan was a little small. So I had two extras. Well, I had enough batter for two muffins and it's actually just super light. It's a lovely looking muffin. Hmm. I like this a lot. I mean, it is quite a light cake. Like when I put it in the oven, it actually puffed up a lot. I think from just the amount of baking um, powder in it. So it's nice and light. Um, it kind of just tastes like a spice cake, like a nice spice cake. I think what a lot of people might think is like, okay, like, is it, is it, you know, sweet enough? Was there enough sugar? Because maybe we didn't put a lot in, but it's the perfect amount of sweetness. It's not too sweet. And then you have like some of the apples and some of the nectarines that I put in there that give it like a little bit extra moisture. So that's actually really good as well. Um, yeah, I hope you all have really enjoyed uh, making and also learning about these Christmas wartime recipes uh, with me. I always think it's super interesting to kind of take in the history and the background of food, how it came to be, and there's so much more to really learn about this if you're interested. I mean, especially if, if you're in the UK, you know that the BBC does a ton of coverage on kind of like wartime recipes. They were saying the agriculture, in terms of the landscape of agriculture in the UK, it really changed forever because of the war. Um, there were the mechanization of farming, so a lot more machines were used, a lot more pesticides and fertilizer were used. Um, the landscape of the UK changed. So if you're interested in more wartime recipes, definitely let me know um, down below and I hope you all have a wonderful and lovely um, holiday and if I don't see you until then, um, New Year's as well. And yeah, thank you for spending time with me today. All right, cool, bye.